This is section 2.1 um, on matrix operations. Just some um, basics out of the way first. Uh, we refer to uh, an M by N matrix A uh, as a matrix with M rows and N columns. And uh, the individual elements in the matrix we denote by uh, lowercase a with a subscript um, ij, where i is the row index, j is the column index. The diagonal entries uh, in a matrix A are those where the row and column indices are the same, so like a11, a22, and so forth. These elements we call the main diagonal of A. Um, a diagonal matrix is a square matrix where all the entries off the main diagonal are zero. So the only place you can have non-zero uh, values is on the diagonal. So here are a couple of diagonal matrices. Notice that the, the key is off the diagonal, um, you have all zeros. So the main diagonal is just uh, uh, 1, 1, 2, 2, and so forth. Um, 3, 3 in this case. So off the diagonal, off the main diagonal, you have all zeros. It's okay to have a zero on the diagonal. We really don't care what's on the diagonal. We just want zeros off the diagonal. Um, here's another uh, diagonal uh, matrix. This one has a, a name. We call it the identity matrix. So it's a um, diagonal matrix because everything off the diagonal is zeros. And uh, the zero matrix is uh, technically a diagonal matrix because everything off the main diagonal is zero. We say that two matrices are equal if they have the same size, so the same number of rows, same number of columns, and their corresponding entries are equal. So the 1-1 one, one entry in one is equal to the 1-1 one, one entry in another. In general, the ijth entry in one is equal to the ijth entry in the other. We can compute the sum of two matrices. We can add two matrices together. Um, this is defined if both matrices are the same size. So you have to do the same number of rows and same number of columns. And in this case, uh, the uh, ijth entry in the sum is just uh, the, the uh, sum of the uh, ijth entries in each of the original matrices. Um, so here's an example one that uh, this sum cannot be computed because these matrices are not the same size. Um, here's one where we can compute the sum. And notice uh, the 7 here is just the 3 plus 4 uh, to get the 3, it's this 2 plus 1, and so forth. So to get uh, the ijth entry over here, you sum the corresponding ijth entries in the two original matrices. We can compute the scalar multiple of a matrix in the same way we compute the scalar multiple of a vector. We just multiply each entry by that scalar. So here's an example. Multiply three times each entry in this matrix, and uh, we produce uh, this one. Uh, <clears throat> your book lists some properties of addition and scalar multiplication of matrices. Um, the first three are regarding uh, addition. So. Um, you'll find that, that since addition of matrices is, is defined essentially the same as addition of real numbers, then a lot of those same properties carry over. So A plus B is B plus A. Uh, the second one um, allows you to um, associate the parentheses uh, as you'd like, so that's the associative property. And uh, if you add any matrix to the zero matrix, uh, you get the same matrix back. Then the, the last three were regarding scalar multiplication. And essentially, um, they say that you can uh, kind of stick the scalar wherever you'd like to, wherever it's convenient. Um, um, it, it all is uh, equivalent. 
Okay, let's move on to matrix multiplication. Because matrix multiplication is uh, not defined um, simply as matrix addition is. It's a little more complicated. It's not just multiplying the corresponding entries together. So here we go. Um, if A is an M by N matrix, and the sizes are important here. Um, so suppose A is M by N and B is N by P. Okay, so that's the key. Um, the number of columns in the first has to equal the number of rows in the second for the product to be defined. Okay, um, so if you have that situation uh, and uh, we say that the columns of B are B1 through BP, then we define the product AB as the M by P matrix, and notice that the M is number of rows in A, P is number of columns in B. So uh, we kind of always look to see if these inner dimensions match up. So the N here matches up with the N here, and that means the product is defined, and then the, the product itself, the dimensions of it, will be the first, uh, the number of rows, which is M, uh, by the number of columns of of B, so it will be M by P. Okay, so how do we compute A times B? Well, notice what this says. It's the M by P matrix whose columns are A times B1 out to A times BP. That is, um, we want to multiply A times B, then we look at it as A times each of the columns of B. Okay, so the first entry the first column of the product is A times the first column of B. The second column of the product is A times the second column of B, and so forth. So notice that each column of the product, each column of AB, is, is of the form A times B1 or A times B2. And we know that, that when we compute A times some column, then we are taking a linear combination of the columns of A using uh, the entries in the vector as the weights. So to get the first column of A times B, we're taking a linear combination of the columns of A using the first column of B as the weights. To get the second column, another linear combination of the columns of A using the entries in the second column of B as the weights, and so forth. Okay, so if we want to compute uh, the product AB, uh, where here are our matrices A and B, then we're going to do it as I just described. First, uh, note that A is a 3 by 2 matrix and B is 2 by 2. So we check to see if the 2 here matches up with the 2 here, which it does. And then we look at the outer dimensions, the 3 and the 2, and that will be the uh, dimensions of the product. So our product will be 3 by 2 in this case. All right, to get the first column of the product, it's A times the first column of B. So here's A, first column of B, 4, negative 1, and this is just a linear combination. So 4 times the first column of A minus 1 times the second column. And uh, this is what we get. Do the same thing to get the second column of the product. It's A times the second column of B. Second column B is uh, 1, 8. So we take that linear combination, 1 times this first column of A plus 8 times the second column. Do that linear combination. And now we have our first uh, and second columns of the product. And uh, so we're done. There is A times B. Um, there's a, another way to compute AB. Probably most of you learned this when you took algebra, college algebra probably. Um, notice uh, that it's defined in terms of inner products. Right? So the IJ entry in the product AB is the inner product of row I of A with column J of B. So let's see how that works. So it's back to our same A and B. And to get the 1, 1 entry in the product, um, then it's going to be row 1 of A times uh, column 1 of B. 
actually these are uh, should not be A's. These should be the the pro I'm talking about the product here. So row one of A times column one of B. Um, do that inner product. So it's going to be three two inner product with four negative one to give you ten in this case and so forth. So to get to the 3, 2 entry of the product, it's row 3 of A times column 2 of B. Okay, so 5 times 1 plus 4 times 8 and gives you 37. And so there you go. Um, you have the uh, same matrix as we ended up with before. Okay, now you should note that um, since matrix multiplication is, is not defined simply, because it's not a simple operation like matrix addition is, um, then properties of real numbers uh, that apply to addition, uh, multiplication do not follow over to matrix multiplication. You know, they did with matrix addition, they don't with matrix multiplication. So, some warnings. Um, if you're dealing with real numbers, A times B equals B times A. That does not hold true for matrices. For matrices, A times B is not necessarily equal to B times A. Of course, it sometimes could be, but in general, A times B is not equal to B times A. Uh, one thing, one reason is that sometimes they're not even both defined, right? Not even both defined. Maybe you can multiply A times B, but you might not be able to multiply B times A and uh, vice versa. However, even if they are both defined, uh, you can't guarantee they'll be equal. Um, so here's an example. Here's a matrix A times B, and we get this product. If we reverse the order, multiply B times A, we get a totally different matrix. Okay? So just because you can multiply both, compute both products, uh, doesn't mean that they'll be the same result. So don't make that mistake. Um, second warning, um, for real numbers, if you know that A times B equals A times C, and you know that A is not equal to zero, you can divide both sides by A and end up with B equals C. Can't do that with matrices. Um, if A, B is A, C, that doesn't mean that B equals C. Okay, here's an example of that. Here's a matrix A. Uh, A times B is this matrix. Here's A times C. Get the same matrix, but B and C are clearly different. And another one, uh, the last warning. Uh, for real numbers, if A times B is equal to zero, you can assume that either A or B uh, is equal to zero, or perhaps both are equal to zero. Not true for matrices. If you have a product of two matrices that equals a zero matrix, um, that doesn't mean that A or B is equal to the zero matrix. And here's an example of that. Here's matrix A times B, and we end up with the zero matrix. But neither of these is equal to the zero matrix. Far from it, in fact. Okay, some properties of matrix multiplication. Um, it, you have the associative property, so you can move the parentheses around, but notice that the order uh, that the matrices appear is unchanged. Okay, so we can't move uh, the we can't change the order that the matrices appear. Can change the order in which we do the multiplication. Uh, we can distribute either from the left or from the right here in numbers two or three. Oops, back back that. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and uh, if we have a scalar, we can move it uh, wherever we'd like. And apparently I thought that was quite uh, um, a uh, important thing since I put an exclamation mark there. Um, and uh, any matrix multiplied by the identity is just itself. Now notice that I'm assuming A is M by N here. So if I multiply on the left, I have to multiply by the M by M identity. Whereas if I multiply on the right, I have to multiply by the N by N identity. Okay. Um, one other thing, the transpose of a matrix uh, is uh, um, computed by uh, taking the uh, ijth entry of uh, the original matrix and that becomes the jith entry of the transpose. So for example, um, 
If this is your matrix A, then I take the 1, 1 entry here, becomes 1, 1 entry here. 1, 2 entry becomes the 2, 1 entry, and so forth. I mean, uh, perhaps an easier way to think of it is that the columns of A become the rows of A transpose. So column 1 is 3, 1, 5. Row 1 of the transpose, 3, 1, 5, and so forth. Or alternatively, the rows of A become the columns of the transpose. So here's a row, first row here, 3, 2, first column here, 3, 2, and so forth. Some properties of the transpose. Um, if I take the transpose of the transpose of a matrix, I'm back where I started. You can look here. If I take the transpose of this matrix, um, then I end up with A. Row 1 here becomes column 1 of A and so forth. So the transpose of the transpose is the original matrix. Um, transpose of a sum is the sum of the transposes, number 2. Um, can move a scalar around, number 3. Number 4, kind of interesting, if you want to take the transpose of a product, that is the product of the transposes but in reverse order. Okay, reverse order. So here's an example of that. If I want to compute the transpose of a product, AB, all right, so here's A, here's B. I want to compute their products, then take the transpose. So I compute the product. Here it is. Transpose that and um, end up with this matrix. Um, or I could do it this way. Transpose each of them initially, but reverse the order that I do the multiplication. So here's B transpose, right? Here's B up here. So I take the transpose that's here. Here's A transpose. And I compute that product, and uh, I get the same thing as I did previously.